I'd love to say an unlimited budget to have tooling, but in most cases, you're not going to get that. But um, an element of good tooling mm. is required. Um, and it doesn't have to be the flashy or all things done thing, but I, I do mm. like certain tools which will get the job done. Um, so, and I will structure teams differently. Mm. Like I mentioned, the data person, a, a business analyst, a project analyst, a project person in a TA team right now mm. does the way you work. Welcome to the All in Recruitment podcast by Manatal, where we explore best practices, learnings, and trends with leaders in the recruitment space. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channels on YouTube and Spotify to stay tuned for our weekly episodes. I'm your host, Lydia, and joining us this week is Tush Vijayaratne of WPP. Great to have you with us, Tush. Thank you for joining us. Absolute pleasure to be here, Lydia. Nice to meet you. So you've come from accountancy and law. That's that's your that's your background and you're trained in it. And you've moved into talent acquisition. So how did this pivot happen, Tush? And what's kept you in this space? Right. Um, so having heritage from Sri Lanka, uh, recruitment was unknown. So I started off in accountancy in Sri Lanka, moved over to UK, I continued accountancy and then got into law as a mm. paralegal. And recruitment, I pretty much fell into. Um, I was looking for a new opportunity, didn't know much about it. Um, a, a nice man took a chance on me. Mm. Two years later, I still enjoy recruitment because of the passion it gives me by meeting different people in different organizations, different industries, across the globe, different levels. Um, I got an impact in someone's life mm. and also that happy marriage of finding the right person for the companies uh, gives me still quite a lot of a thrill in it. And that is something I enjoy to date. I still enjoy going back to my sourcing days, mm. mm -hmm. uh, even today, really. So how many years have you spent in recruitment, really? I mean, after moving from those two, two fields? 20 years then, this uh, year. 20 years? Mm -hmm. Yep, this year, so, in July, 20 years. So you would have seen so many changes in the field, Trish. What, what do you think is the most standout uh, change that you've seen, or the, most, uh, the one that has the most impact, really? I think I've seen two major changes. I, I remember when I first started off, um, I couldn't go, go into an in-house role if I hadn't done an HR management background or degree mm. as such. And that's changed in the TA industry now, where someone from an agency background could go into an in-house role. Mm. And actually, it's, it's evolved a lot to become a more recruitment to a TA opportunity, to be a more TA consultant role. So it's not just hiring profiles, but the end-to-end -end life cycle right. of that acquisition. And the second aspect is the technology. And that's changed a lot. When I started, it was pretty much yellow pages to find someone mm. and calling. Uh, this was pre-LinkedIn days. And obviously, you've got LinkedIn and other tools around there today to help you. It's evolved now with the AI coming in and different mm. other data and data stories. So it's been a massive, massive change. And I think the globalization has come in much more. Mm -hmm. When I started, it was a city, a country. I mean, you're looking for a person. But right now, it's a skill globally that you're looking yeah. for. So the boundaries have been broken. Mm -hmm. So that, again, is a massive change over the years. So now in this role at WPP, what are some areas that you have been focusing on, especially for talent acquisition? I understand it's for um, corporate and enterprise technology, right? Yes, so at WPP, the, my remit is the corporate structure and, and uh, technology. So it's enterprise technology the HR functions, marketing, finance, legal procurement functions globally. So uh, the, my key focus has been, and I've been in the organization at WPP for a year, I've been in the network for a year and a half before that. And it's more the transformation that we're going through as an organization mm -hmm. and gearing up in terms of, again, like I mentioned, global um, sourcing, global skills, making sure that we are built structurally in certain countries operationally, to deliver to the entities. I'm looking at what my team looks like going mm. forward and what skills my team has to learn and evolve with, the uh, ways of working. I'm a much, massive uh, agile evangelist. So agile HR is something I coach and I train people up in. And I'm quite passionate to bring that into the teams and the ways of working from a mindset as well as a methodology perspective. 12 months of um forming a team setting the culture in i mean how much of that has how much of that has reached the goals that you have set from the very beginning it's um 
it's one of those things where I think when I say I'm done, it's not something that you will ever finish doing, mm. right? Because the world changes so much so quickly now that you're never done. So I would like to say that we've had um, a step change in the way we've been doing things and it's been progressive in that respect. Uh, but every time you think, I think I'm nearly done, something mm -hmm. else comes up. Something else comes up. Something else is, you know, there's things happening globally. There might be a technology change. It might be a skills change. So it keeps my life interesting, keeps the team interesting. Um, but I think it's important that we always pivot accordingly. Mm -hmm. So we have... I have looked at restructuring the team. I've looked at upskilling the team. We've got a different mindset of the way we approach things. We've got a partnership approach with our stakeholders. So there's lots of different changes we've done during the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And we will keep on doing it at the same time, taking it to the next level in terms of what that looks like. So in terms of the challenges, obviously, you know, every form of recruiting in any industry would face some kind of challenge here and there. But are there specific or unique challenges that you face when you recruit for a global advertising and marketing company? I think global advertising is very similar to most other fast moving industries, really, and digital industries. Um, it's becoming closer and closer, the consultancy world, the marketing advertising world, mm. because we all want good digital people. Um, so it's very competitive and we're quite lucky WPP being a brand that it is that we do find those profiles and people are interested to work for us. I think it's important from our side to make sure that the candidate journey and the candidate experience as well as the business experience internally with stakeholders is at the best it could be at all times mm -hmm. and that's what we're always trying to evolve. Um, I think from a market perspective I, I strongly believe it's not a uh, there's no talent shortage it's a skills shortage and certain mm. skills can be taught and we've always got to look at potentials upskilling uh, internal mobility those are all things which will help the funnel mm -hmm. in an organization so i'm quite passionate about that aspect of things uh, because we will otherwise struggle to find all the people all the time uh, co compared to our competitors also right when you when you speak about internal mobility and you know tapping into potential, especially growth. Uh, in a large organization, clearly there will be opportunities for people to move into different directions. So is there a specific kind of platform or, or you know, an initiative that you, you might have put in place? We, we do we do have internal platforms um, uh, in, within the organization. And like like you mentioned, we're, we're, we're massive as an organization. And you could do a good 20, 30, 40 year career mm -hmm. within a, a network. Uh, going from role to role, age to agency, and progressing at the same time. So it's something that is encouraged a lot. Mm. Um, and we are looking at how we can make it better and bigger as we go along with the new technology that's coming in, new platforms coming in, we're looking at what that could look like. Mm. Um, but it is a massive growth area for us. So you also oversee end to end recruitment globally at WPP. That already sounds like a very broad and massive scope with many different moving parts. Mm -hmm. but, but let's move into sourcing as being the bread and butter for yeah. you, right now. What are some key factors based on your your experience? What are some key factors to remember or aspects to remember when you want to identify the right kind of sourcing channel? Yes. Yeah, so the fundamentals of sourcing are very similar, but your go-to market strategy changes. Mm -hmm. Every market has a local nuance of how people will adapt and want to be contacted, mm. the platform I'd be using. Um, and a, a good example, we, we use LinkedIn majority of the time, but when you go into India, we use Nokri as a mm. platform. And that's better known in India than LinkedIn sometimes for certain skills that we look for. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to understand what tooling and what databases are available in that location to attract the right people and what, it might be social recruitment, it might be the traditional recruitment of posting a job. What does that look like? At the same time, the TA team needs to understand how to position that message to their community to get that attraction. Mm -hmm. So I think it, you need to basically make sure that you understand the market and the industries you want in the market. And that's where it's not recruitment, it's talent acquisition now. Mm -hmm. It would be basically, I find the person, I source the person, fill the role. There's an element before that where actually it's talent attraction and that you identify someone, and then you've got to figure out how do I make that person who I identified interested in my role that I have today? What is the best avenue to contact that person? What is the best tool to utilize and the best method 
to do it. So global teams, yes, very similar ways of working and the base level structure is similar, but there's mm -hmm. a local um, so a 10% of what they do will be local based. Right. You know? And this comes from within the local teams itself. And, and this is a, a, a the creative world that kind of control lies in, in the teams. It does. It does. Um, I've moved into more global team environments. Hmm. So I from um, country based, regional based teams to global environments. And my belief is, and look at my background, I've worked predominantly in recruitment in UK, based in UK, but I have been recruiting for companies in US, in Australia, Singapore, in India, mm -hmm. Africa. It doesn't matter where you're based anymore. Mm -hmm. You just have to adapt your style according to that region and that organization and the skills around it. So it's more you as a person that needs mm -hmm. to adapt your base, really. So I give that ownership to the recruiter mm -hmm. to calls on what is needed uh, but we do have a governance structure overarching that at the same time. Right, understood. And in terms of, you know, making it clearly a global recruitment would involve technology. And so how do you leverage technology and, and more importantly, the data that comes out of it in, in your recruitment process? Yes. Yeah, so I think um, data is one thing, a storytelling of the data, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Um, so there are different aspects of making sure you have the right data. And that's through your ATS systems, through external toolings. Um, what I am equipping and what I would advise anyone to do is actually understanding the, the story behind that data. Mm -hmm. And how do you tell that story to your stakeholders to get their buy-in, for them to understand the challenges you're facing in the market and to understand what investment needs to be done sometimes to retain that talent or get the talent. So... I would use data and storytelling together as a pair. And I think one thing that I've seen in the last probably eight years is that TA have become more data centric in the way they work. Data roles have come up in TA teams where sometimes mm. you've got data coming in, you've got your reporting person coming in, which we didn't see 20 years ago. Uh, and that's where the, it's evolved to mm. now. That has such a pivotal role in what we do and the way we get things over the line in organizations. So in that sense, how has the role of a recruiter or the traits a recruiter needs to have, how has yep. that changed? It must have also evolved. I mean, it's not possibly it's a, it's a shared skill among everyone, even though there is a dedicated role for data inside a recruitment team, but still the culture of being data driven, driven has to be there. So what traits should a recruiter actually have in order to perform in this kind of environment? So I look for what I call a T-shaped consultant mm. uh, in talent acquisition. So it's not recruitment, it's T-shaped. And sometimes you might be doing talent branding. Sometimes you might be the sourcing. You might be doing the partnering. You might be uh, closing a candidate. You might be working with the people team in terms of saying, well, this is the handover of here's a person, this I should uh, retain the individual afterwards. So you wear multiple hats depending mm. on the scenario. Data also overlays the end-to-end. So you've got to be a consultant, number one. Yeah. I think it's also important, regardless of where you are in your role, that you're commercial in your decision making. So you've got to look at the impact that the individual you're bringing in to the organization has at the end of the day for the organization. And that might be that they are revenue generating or not. But at the same time, it's important to realize this individual is going to have this impact in this team and therefore add value to the organization down the line, which is very different to old school recruitment many, many moons ago. So you've got to have that skill. Data centric is important. An element of analysis is important in the role. Your, like I mentioned, storytelling is very important. So how do you analyze the data and be good in your presentation skills mm. um, doing that? So it is a very, very different profile than what it was um, many moons ago. But I think it is evolving it's become, you've got your AI coming in, which helps a bit with your data anal analysis skills. So you don't have to be that total data engineer profile, mm -hmm. but use those that are around you. But make sure that you're open to switch your hats depending on the situation and be that T-shaped profile. When it comes to dealing with stakeholders, you brought this point up uh, several times already. When it comes to dealing with internal stakeholders, especially hiring managers, what are some 
ways to to think about managing that and also keeping expectations and, and uh, this on the same page. What are some thoughts or, or ideas that you might have for anyone listening in? I think the key aspect is, and I tell this to every line manager I meet, I'm an extension of their department. I'm mm. not a separate right uh, yes we do support but we are extension so we work alongside our line managers and the stakeholders so it is been on the journey together it's a business problem not just a ta problem when you're trying to find someone and we come to the solution together as a group so that's very important the other aspect of it is that you make sure that the line manager is always communicated in a timely manner so that they know the challenges you're facing at any mm. given time, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so that you're working together as a pair. So I've introduced uh, Agile Ways of Working, and I work strong band on that. And I introduce not only my team, but also in the business, so that businesses are also bought into it. So there's no um, blockers in the way of us funneling profiles through. The journey is seamless. There is a partnership approach in doing it. And whenever there is a process improvement, that is that also becomes another another point to story tell the data, right? Another opportunity to do so. It's storytelling the data. It's a joint effort. Mm. Um, parties are bought into it because it, it does impact both sides. It impacts the TA side as well as the business side. So it's important that whatever change you do, both parties are in that room making a decision together so that they understand why we're doing something. We might not get it right all the time. And that's also something I'm very open about working agile sometimes we do get things wrong because we have to pivot very quickly but the understanding that we will try something different to try and make it better and the likelihood it might not always work but if it doesn't work we'll try something differently uh, getting that buy-in early is important mm. and now going back to the recruitment process so my next question question would be more hypothetical so if you could design the ideal recruitment process you know from scratch what kind of maybe unconventional elements would you include in this? My, if I had a blank canvas completely, mm -hmm. I would start the basics there from a workflow perspective because that's important to understand. The mindset of the team would be consultative and subject matter experts uh, who are bought into, I know this industry, I know this, um, area of the business and now I want to hire for it mm. so I think and I look back at my career and I, I didn't do technology as a subject I did accountancy and I did law I fell into tech recruitment I've done tech recruitment for 20 years and I think if I had done maybe a, a degree in tech or even studied tech to a certain extent somewhere it would have helped me liaise with line managers better uh, but I had to be proactively go and learn about CRM systems and ERP systems. Mm -hmm. um, having that background knowledge helps. And I think, especially in this day and age, you want you need to be a subject matter expert for the business in what you're doing. Uh, and that's where your value comes in. You are providing insight externally and internally to the organization. Right. So that's something I would do in terms of the finding the right profiles in the team is to... Make sure it's people who have that background and experience around it or the appetite to learn. And that's also key. Hmm. The learning for me is very critical in everyone I hire in my team uh, because the world changes a lot. And agile base of working, agile methodology is fundamental to me uh, because that brings out transparency. It takes hierarchy out. It brings empathy when you're working. It brings uh, togetherness as a team. Uh, so that's critical for me. I'd love to say an unlimited budget to have tooling, but in most cases, you're not going to get that. But um, an element of good tooling mm. is required. Um, and it doesn't have to be the flashy all things down thing, but I, I do like certain tools which will get the job done. Um, so, And I will structure teams differently. Mm. Like I mentioned, the data person, a, a business analyst, a project analyst, a project person in a TA team right now mm. does the way you work everything we do right now is a project in a way mm -hmm. it's not a role it's a group of roles in a certain country in a certain location at a certain level so by bringing it together as a program you you tend to be a bit more organized a bit more method methodical mm. and you have people around that table to make it happen so those are things i would do differently 
And finally, Tush, what advice would you give someone who is starting out in talent acquisition or even in recruitment today? I would say be curious. Um, be open-minded, be curious. You need to have a passion for it. Um, recruitment is a funny industry because you'll have more bad days than good days, but the good days are good when you get it. And you need to be resilient. Uh, you need to work through it. It is important that you bring everything you have learned in your life into that one role. And everything I've done as a kid, as a university uh, student, working in accountancy, working in law, I still use in my recruitment today. Mm -hmm. I, so you bring it all together. It's one of those rules where everything you have learned and everyone who have interacted with, you can actually take it to the role. Um, so it's important to be that kind of profile and have the passion that you will be changing someone's life eventually. Uh, that that marriage of right person, right role is amazing when you get it. Uh, and that is what keeps you going. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about Um Strategy is always good to have. A strategic person, commercial person, that awareness is very good. Always be curious, always be learning. The world is changing so quickly, you've got to adapt much, much quicker than everyone else. So, you know, having a curious mindset, being passionate and, and being uh, commercial, right? A consultative commercial yep. person who is able to see it from a business sense rather than just filling seats. Right? That's right. Yes, exactly that. So thank you so much, Tish, for your insights. These have been very generous and I, I, I really appreciate your time. So for those who are listening in, suddenly they may want to pick up a conversation or even connect with you. Where can they do so? I'm on LinkedIn. Um, so please feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. My email address is tush.vicharatna.wpp.com. Happy to connect either way. Thank you again, Tush. And we have been in conversation with Tush Vijay Ratne of WPP. Thank you for joining us. And remember to subscribe to stay tuned for more weekly episodes from All in Recruitment.